Okay, so let's have the debrief first. Okay, so uh, in this week's studios, uh, basically we had a few things that we learned. So the first thing we learned was the use of a comparator. Okay, and uh, in open loop configuration, okay, the gain of the op amp is very very high. Okay, which means that the moment the one of the terminals is slightly bigger than the other terminal it will automatically saturate okay because of the very high gain so the op amps output will go to positive v set or negative v set all right uh, so that is basically what we saw all right and the gain okay uh, so even though the difference okay so we amplify the difference but even though the difference is very small this gain is very very high okay uh, so of course ideally we say it's infinity but uh, if you look at data sheet maybe they'll say 10 to the power of 5 10 to the power of 7 or so on all right so it's a very very high gain which means a small difference uh between the voltages and the plus or minus will automatically cause the output to saturate okay so when it comes to saturation uh, the output depends on the supply voltages all right for v plus bigger than v minus is always going to plus v set all right and if v plus is lesser than v minus then it will go to either negative v set if it is a dual supply or you go to zero if it is a single supply all right so it all depends on whether you're using a single supply or dual supply for your op amp okay so in this case for example you can use uh op amp to convert an analog signal to a digital signal all right so basically what is happening here is you are having a uh, input voltage all right and you have a reference okay so for example okay if i go to draw my signal here okay so if, let's say my signal is something like this all right uh, then how would you okay so if you remember your uh, handout we said that the plus minus v set is around one volt or so lesser than your plus minus vcc okay so if you are running it at plus five volts and negative five volts your plus minus v set will be uh, close to maybe plus minus four volts or something like that all right so it all depends on what voltage you're running in Okay, your op amps, if you look at the data sheet of the op amp, you can uh, supply or you can have the power supply up to uh, uh, quite a high range. Okay, I can't remember exactly, but I think it's about uh, 15 volts or 18 volts or something. Okay, so some op amps can go even up to 20 over volts supply and you still work fine. All right, so the op amps can, can actually uh, be supplied with a very high voltage, okay, as the uh, power supplies. Which means your plus minus v set can also be very high if you need them to be as such okay uh, so coming back here if my input signal goes above a reference then we say is uh, one then it goes below the reference and is zero all right so in this case for example if i say that my uh, if this signal is uh, maybe fluctuating around the zero line and if I say my zero is my reference, okay, that means as long as the signal is positive, okay, during this time, my signal will be a high, and other times it will be a low. Okay, so this is how you can sort of uh, translate a signal, okay, from the analog, okay, as you can see over here, to a digital domain. All right, uh, of course. You know, exactly what reference you want to use all depends on what is the application or how what kind of signal you're trying to look at okay uh, if you think of it in terms of uh, uh, let's say a, a temperature sensor okay so just now we were talking about a to d conversion and so on all right uh, so maybe you have a temperature sensor and you want to know the temperature okay uh, when it hits certain threshold okay so of course if your application is that you want to always know the exact temperature uh, of the device then yes you may want to do the a to d conversion okay and then get the value and then you can display it and so on 
all right but if let's say you're not interested in displaying the value but you just want to know uh whenever my temperature goes above a certain threshold then you can do something like this correct that means the temperature sensor connected to the op amp and your reference your voltage must be chosen such that it is always uh, is representing that particular uh, temperature okay so if you look at it uh, maybe a particular voltage okay so maybe your your temperature sensor okay so let's say this is my temperature sensor module okay so maybe one signal will give me a one of the pin will give me a voltage okay that correspond to the actual uh, temperature that is sensing okay and generally maybe if uh if my temperature is between uh maybe 25 degrees and 35 degrees uh it correspond to maybe zero volt to four volt okay so as long as it goes above four volt means it has gone above 35 degrees and that is what you want to capture okay so maybe most of the time your sensor is like this but occasionally something goes wrong and it shoots up okay and this is what you want to capture okay you're not interested in all the normal temperature range then you can just say that okay i use open and i configure my reference to be four volt so the moment my signal goes above four volts my v out will go high all right and that is a signal that i can use to do something else okay that means something has gone wrong i can, I can light an led i can sound an alarm okay i can do something all right so th these are different ways of designing a system all right you, you can choose the digital pathway okay you you digitize everything you write a software you can get it done or if you're interested in only certain events then you can capture those events using uh, op amp or using uh, some other circuitry that you can build and then use the output of that circuit to do something else okay so these are just different ways of using the circuit okay uh, the next thing that we talked about was filter all right and i think uh, those of you who presented today all did a good job okay to explain uh, the concept of the filter all right so in reality all right when you're talking about a sensor uh, that uh, is going to be connected to a system there's a high chance that you can have a lot of interference all right um, so of course if you talk about sensors that are measuring physiological properties like ecg eeg and so on okay uh, definitely there's a lot of interference all right because uh, any thing to do with your body there's always a lot of electrical signals all over all right that can interfere with what you are trying to measure okay and what you want to do is you want to do some filter operation to remove the frequency that we do not want and focus on the frequencies that we are interested in okay uh, so of course in order for us to do the uh, design the filter we must understand the characteristics of the signal we are dealing with okay so if you say ecg signal or eeg signal firstly you must know okay this signal ecg what exactly is the frequency range okay uh, so if let's say my frequency range is from maybe 20 hertz okay to maybe uh, 200 hertz okay so maybe that is the frequency i'm interested in okay so first that's the first thing you must know okay what is the range of frequencies i want okay then the next thing is uh do i have frequencies before and after okay so you need to then look at do i have frequencies before and after and if i do have other frequencies or interferences before and after then i decide on the type of filter that i need to build okay uh of course there will always be some noise but in some cases maybe the noise is uh, acceptable it's not too uh, uh, it's not so much that it interferes with your data or your measurement in any way all right so sometimes uh, we don't have to be very strict in designing things uh, as for the textbook okay you can always uh, see what is a more practical solution all right that better suits the the project you're working on okay so let's look at the filter that we did uh, in class so the first thing that we talked about was the passive low pass filter again why we say passive is because whenever you don't have a op amp you don't have any additional power or amplification to the signal we say it's a passive device the moment you add in the op amp component it becomes an active device 
Okay, so in this, uh, you have a RC filter, it's a voltage divider uh, concept, all right? So basically what will happen is the voltage at this point is a voltage divider, all right? It's basically, the, if you look at it in terms of uh, impedance, it is Xc over R plus Xc multiplied by V in. Okay, so that is the voltage that you see at this point over here. And since we know that uh, the impedance of Xc, all right, will, will change as the frequency changes, all right, then that sort of affects the voltage that you will get at this point. All right, so Xc, we know is 1 over 2 pi Fc. So when your frequency goes up, all right, like, what you all mentioned today in the presentations, your XC will go down. So this pathway here behaves more and more like a short circuit. All right. So the voltage that is seen at this point over here, VC will become smaller and smaller as your frequency goes up. All right. So that is the basic design of a low pass filter and your sort of frequency response curve will look something like this. Okay, so this calculation in dB, we introduced you, uh, introduced this to your last studio, I mean last tutorial. Uh, so basically the gain, okay, uh, is output over input, it's just a ratio, okay. Uh, in most cases, we also commonly express it in dB, okay, uh, basically because it gives you a more manageable number. Okay, in some cases, the gain can be very high, okay, so... Uh, when you look at it in terms of very high number, okay, it's a bit difficult to relate. But when you talk about it in decibels, people have a better idea how to relate it together. Okay, so in terms of power gain, we say it is 10 log, okay, power out over power in, or 20 log V out over V in. Okay, so in the uh, uh, video that I sent out, I explain in detail how the uh, minus 3 dB point is. Uh, related to the half power point, all right? Uh, so that that gives you a clear explanation of that. Okay, uh, frequency response curve. Okay, is basically uh, measuring the change in the amplitude or the power of a signal as the frequency uh, of the system changes. Okay, uh, so normally what we do is the x axis is the frequency, okay, in Lorentzian scale, and the y axis is the power gain in decibels. Uh, so this is a sort of standard convention uh, for you to draw the frequency response curve. Okay. Uh, so the cutoff frequency, like what I mentioned just now, is the point where you take 3 dB uh, from the pass band. Okay. So in the pass band is the frequency that you want, right? Is the component that you want. So in this case, for a high pass filter, this is the frequency or this. Uh, uh, is the frequency that you want, all right? And the gain uh, is basically the passband gain. And you take 3 dB away from there, and that 3 dB away is equivalent to the half power point. So that is the point where the power, all right, of the output is half of that of the input. Okay, so that is the 3 dB point. And this 3 dB point basically tells us exactly where is the cutoff frequency or FC. Okay. Uh, basically, because we know that this is a slope, okay. Uh, theoretically, of course, uh, if it was like this, it would be ideal, okay. But that is just yeah, on paper, right? I, I uh, realistically, it will always be a curve, so it will be flowing down and then gently tapering off here, okay. So because of this, we want to have a common understanding of where to draw this line, this cutoff point, correct? So this cutoff point is basically 3 dB away from the passband gate. Okay, so that's sort of make sure that everybody follows the same convention, okay, in, in uh, defining the cutoff frequency. Okay, so this shows you a picture of a band pass filter, all right, where you have a passband of 10 dB, so the minus 3 dB point is the uh, 7 dB point, okay, wherever it touches the frequency response curve, okay, so that represents the two cutoff frequencies for the uh, frequency range of this filter. Okay, in terms of uh, 
calculating the cutoff frequency based on the RC values is the same formula, whether it's high pass or low pass, the same formula. Only thing is, in high pass, the configuration is capacitor first, followed by resistor. Here is resistor first, followed by capacitor. Okay, so it's just the orientation is different. Other than that, the formula is the same, 1 over 2 pi RC. Okay, for first order low pass filter, all right, uh, we say that the slope after the cutoff frequency is approximately minus 20 dB per decade. Okay, so one decade is 10 times the frequency. Okay, so 1K, 10K, 100K and so on. So it's multiplied by 10, all right. And when we say minus 20 dB per decade means, for example, in at 1K, I'm at, let's say, 1 dB or at 0 dB, okay, then at 10K, I'll be at minus 20. So for every 10 times increase in the frequency, the gain has dropped by 20 dB. Okay, so that is the slope. Okay, so this is a transition period. Okay, and after that, you'll see a slope. Okay, so the slope is going down at minus 20 dB per decade. Okay, so... Again, this only applies to for first order filter, which we are studying. Okay, uh, towards the end of the slides, we will just introduce you to the concept of what is a second order or third order, but that is beyond the module. Okay, you'll probably learn that in other modules. Uh, and of course, if you need a more better uh, response for your filter, a more accurate uh, response, then you may want to use a higher order filter in your design. Okay, so that basically sums up the review part. Okay, so let me go on to discussing the questions. Okay, so let's look at the first question here. Okay, so in this first question, we are told, uh, we are given a system. So this amplifier here is basically very much like your op-amp. Okay? Where you see there's an input resistance, there's an output resistance, and this again multiplied by the V in. All right. So they ask you uh, to show that if R in equals to R L, the power gain in dB is given by this formula over here. Okay. So let's analyze this. Okay. So the power at the input side. Okay. So what will the power at the input side over here? Will be B in square over R in. Okay, so that is the power that you can see at the input side. Okay, over at the output side. V out square over RL. Okay, so that is the output side power. Okay, so now if I were to just relate them together, okay. Power gain. Okay, so you go to express them in power gain in dB. Okay, uh, as we saw, it is 10 log to the base 10 of P out over P in. Okay, so if you put in the values 10 log to the base 10 of V out square over uh, RL divided by v in square over r in okay and that will be 10 log to the base 10 of v out square over v in square multiplied by r in over r l Okay, so okay, so in um, log, this multiplication would be considered as a addition. Okay, 
Okay, so if I were to say that if R in equals to R L. Okay, if R in equals to R L, okay, this whole thing will become what? Okay, this whole thing will become zero. Correct? Because log to the one would be zero. Okay, so this whole thing here would become zero. So the only thing left would be 10 log to the base 10 of v out over v in square, which is 20 log to the base 10 v out over v in. Okay, so basically we are just doing the analysis like we showed you before. Okay, starting with the 10 log p out over p in, and then we substitute the, the expressions for p out and p in, and then the rest is just your normal uh, log mats. Okay, so I think this question should be fine. Uh, let's go on to the next question here. Okay, so in this question, um, we are given this circuit and you are asked to calculate the voltage gain V out over V in. Okay, of, of M1. Okay, so how do you do this? Okay, so the first thing is, uh, we always go back to the op M golden rules. Alright, so we say that no current flows in into the input terminals of the op M and uh, in a closed loop configuration, both V plus and V minus will be the same. Alright, so that's the first thing. That means we can say that this voltage here is V in. Okay, and since op M2 positive is grounded, then this voltage here we can also say it is connected to ground. Okay, so, th so that is the application of the golden rules. Okay. Uh, the next step would be we can look back to apply our node analysis, our Ohm's law, and things like that. All right, and uh, we can also define additional nodes. All right, so I can call this node maybe uh, V2. I can call this node V3. All right, so all this is again you can label them. Okay, uh, anything you like is to help us to come up with equations that can then solve. That we can solve to find a relationship between V out and V in. Okay, so the first thing we can do is we know that no current flows into the branches. So that means here the current here is zero, and here also the current is zero. All right. So with that understanding, we can proceed with the analysis. So this current over here. We can say that this is equals to V in over R1. Okay, and the current that is flowing through this resistor IR1 has to be the same current that is also flowing through R2. Correct? Because we say that I in this case is zero. The current flowing into the op amp is zero. So whatever current is flowing through R1 has to be the same current that is flowing through R2. Okay, so with that, we can now define V2. Okay, and we can say that V2 is V in plus current multiplied by R2. Correct? This voltage plus the voltage drop across the resistor over here, that will give me V2. Alright, so that will be V in plus v in over r1 and i can factorize out v in i get one plus uh, so this is uh, i forgot the r2 here so i is this this is i Okay, so R2 over R1. Okay, so this is your expression for the voltage at V2. Correct? Okay, 
the next thing we can do is we can also we can look at node v3 okay and we can look at node v3 and we can apply uh, kcl at this node okay so if i apply kcl at this node i can say that all the current flowing in to this node is uh, equals to zero all right so uh, if i look at the analysis for this node i can say that v2 minus zero over r3 plus v out minus v3 over r4 is equals to zero okay so that is uh, the analysis and v3 is actually what so v3 i can actually write it as zero because v3 here is zero okay the note here is actually zero so v2 minus zero over r3 plus v out over zero um, minus zero over r4 is equal to zero okay so there is no current flowing in this branch so we only take that these two branches flowing into this node okay so with this uh, what is the next step you can rearrange this so what we see what you have is v2 over r3 plus v out over r4 is equal to zero okay uh, what is v2 v2 is this we already have an expression for v2 okay so maybe let me write it over here so uh, v2 is uh, v in 1 plus r2 over r1 whole thing over r3 plus v out over r4 equals to zero okay uh, so i can rearrange or move things around so i can say that uh, if i bring the v out or r for the other side okay or the v out over r4 is equals to negative uh, v in over r3 multiplied by one plus r2 over r1 and then the v in i bring over so v out over v in is equals to negative r4 over r3 1 plus r2 over r1 okay so that will be the final expression that relates uh, v out and v in in this circuit okay so basically we are applying the same things we have learned before only thing is the first step is to apply the op m golden rules all right that we have v plus and v minus to be the same and no current flows in to the op m terminals okay and after that then you look at the nodes and then from the nodes you can derive equations all right that you relate them together and then form a expression that you can simplify okay uh, so that is the technique okay, that you must learn how to apply when you look at this kind of circuit. Okay, so first open golden rules, and after the open golden rules, then you go ahead to do all your Ohm's law, node analysis, and things like that. Okay, and then you have the voltages at different points, and eventually you solve the circuit by finding the relationship between the output and the input of the open. Okay, V2. <coughs> V2 is basically the node over here. Okay, and this is basically, okay, so if you imagine as a, a normal circuit divider, if I have V2 over here and I have R2, and then I have another V in, and then I have R1, and this is ground. Okay, and if I tell you that the current flowing here is v in over r1 correct so the current flowing here is v in over r1 means it is the same current that is also flowing here okay so whatever voltage that is here this v in is already with respect to ground okay so v2 is whatever voltage drop that is at v in plus the voltage drop at 
across R2. Okay, so that is how you get this expression over here. Okay, so let's go on to the next question here. Okay, so in this next question, you have again two of M's. All right, and you're supposed to derive the expression okay, that relates the output to the input. Okay, so let's look at this. Okay, so the first part over here you can see is uh, this whole part here, okay, is a standard. Okay, so if you look at this circuit here, this is actually what? This is actually your uh, inverting op amp. Okay, inverting op amp configuration. Okay, your input signal is applied to the negative, the positive is grounded, and you have the feedback resistors. Okay, that means the voltage at this point here. Okay, if I call it V out one, I can straight away say that uh, V out one is equals to negative R three over R one. Okay, so that is your standard. Uh, so called your inverting configuration for the op -app. Now the next thing is the this part over here. Okay, let me... okay, so now is the second part of the circuit. Okay, on the right hand side. So we know that the input to this circuit is basically the V out one. Okay, is now the input to the second part of the circuit. Now in the second part of the circuit, okay, what do we have? All right, uh, we have uh, some different configuration. So fine, we apply the same golden rules as before. So we say that V plus and V minus is the same. All right. So as you can see, this is a short circuit point. Okay, which means both these points are the same. And since V plus is grounded, this whole point here is also grounded. Okay, this whole point is also grounded. So with that, we can define a node over here. Okay, so let's just uh, call this uh, V2, for example. And I can apply the same uh, rules. But in this case, of course, V2 is already grounded. All right, which means I can now just apply node analysis to this node V2. All right, and what will I get? I can say that v2 minus 0 okay because v2 is 0 over r2 plus uh, v out 1 minus 0 over r4 plus v out minus 0 over r5 is equals to 0 okay so i'm applying the node analysis to this node here v2 and v2 is ground right v2 is ground and we are saying that all the current flowing in adds up to zero so v2 minus zero over r2 plus v out one minus zero over r4 plus v out minus zero over r5 okay so all three currents add up to zero uh, so let's uh, go ahead to simplify this Okay, so let me write it over here. Uh, so V2 over R2 plus V out 1. So all of them is just uh, minus 0. So I take out that plus V out over R5 equals to 0. Okay, uh, what we want is to obtain the expression relating the output to the input. So uh, we'll keep V out over here and we'll move everything else to the other side. So V out over R5 is equals to negative V out 1 over R4, negative V2 over R2. Okay. Uh, and what is V out 1? V out 1 we saw is this negative R3 uh, R over R1. So we can substitute that over here. So what you will end the R5 we can. Uh, Okay, let me do that first. Okay, uh, so V out is negative R3 over R1 over R4. Um, 
V1 minus uh, V2 over R2. Okay, and the last step we can bring over the R5. So V out equals to negative R3 R5 over R1 R4 V1 minus R5 over R2 V2. Oh, sorry, this uh, minus will disappear, all right, because it, this was a negative over here. Okay, so the negative and negative will cancel out. So once I substitute that, it will become a positive here. All right, so this is your expression uh, for V out. Okay, and uh, what is the next thing they ask us to do? Uh, they ask us to uh, design the resistance value such that V out is the difference between the two input signals amplified by a gain factor. So they want a single factor multiplied by the difference between the two inputs. So effectively what they want, okay, what they want is this, huh? they want V out equals to some factor and then we say V1 minus V2. Okay, K into V1 minus V2. So how do we do this? So you can see that over here, uh, in order for that to happen, this and this must be the same. All right, this and this must be the same. So let's look at it first. So if I want R3, R5 over R1, R4 to be equals to R5 over R2. Okay, uh, of course, uh, you can say that as long as I satisfy this condition is fine, but you see that there is a common R5 over here. So you can actually bring out the R5, okay, and see the rest. So R3 over R1, R4 equals to uh, R5, 1 over R2. Okay, so since R5 is common, okay, what is left is this and this. Okay, so what I need to fulfill is that R3 over R1, R4 must be equals to 1 over R2. Okay, if this condition can be satisfied, then I can rewrite my expression. Okay, I can rewrite my final expression as Okay, I can rewrite my final expression as V out equals to R5 over R2. Okay, uh, why? Because both of them have the same R5, and 1 over R2 will be R3 over R1, R4, and V1 minus V2. Okay, so this becomes your K. This becomes the K. So you can just simply write it as K V1 minus V2. Alright, so that is what the question is asking. How do I choose some resistor values to make sure that the output is now just a constant factor K uh, multiplied by V1 minus V2? Okay, so in this case, you, you choose resistor values, resistance values that satisfy this condition. Okay, and after that, what you have is your output signal will just be a amplification multiplied by the difference between the two signals. All right, V1 and V2. Okay, so basically what, you, what we have designed here is what? We have designed a op-amp circuit that can actually give us a gain that is representing the difference between the two signals with a gain, uh, with the difference between the two signals multiplied by a gain that can now be controlled through resistors. Okay, so by just controlling the resistors, okay, I can actually decide how much gain I want and I can know the difference between two signals. Okay, so that is what uh, this circuit has, is able to do for us.
Okay, so if you change the op amp uh, to some different configuration, uh, then we need to uh, relook at how the circuit is going to be and analyze it. Okay, uh, so I can't say upfront, okay, unless we redo the analysis. Okay, but basically, whatever is the case, if I were to change this to op amp uh, into a non inverting configuration, okay, you can analyze it the same way as this. That means you take the V out of the first circuit, then you do the node analysis on the second circuit, and then from there you can step through and come up with the expression. Okay, so whether it will be the same or not, I am not very sure. I, I think we need to work it out to confirm. Uh, oh yeah, so V out one here is yeah is multiplied by V in. I forgot to put the V in there. Okay, so two inverting uh, signals, all right, would give us back the same original signal, all right, all right. So if you look at it, uh, the V out one is amplified and inverted, and then it's also going into the negative of the second uh, op amp all right uh, and in this case is another inverting amplifier and in our case the output will be the difference between v1 minus v2 okay uh, of course in this case you have to uh, we are looking at it from the uh, aspect of uh, both of them being inverting so if two signals two op amps are inverting eventually the inverting and inverting cancel off each other but uh, in terms of uh, V1, you see that V1 is going through, only V1 goes, goes through the two uh, inversion, whereas V2 goes through only a single inversion. All right. So that is why in the final expression, your V1 is positive over here, but your V2 is still negative. Right? Because V2 is still the inverted version, because V2 is only applied to the second of them. Okay, V1 is applied to both op amps. So V1 goes through two negative op amps, so it comes back to the same positive phase. All right, whereas V2 goes through only a single inverting op amp, so it is still the inverted version. Okay, so you get V1 minus V2. All right, uh, generally, okay, for op amp, when you connect them up together, okay, uh, whether this circuit or earlier circuit, uh, it's always good to do some detailed analysis like this to understand what is happening. Uh, don't directly, unless that circuit, you very clearly can see that this is an inverting or non-inverting uh, configuration, then you straight away can say, like for example, over here, okay, in this circuit over here, uh, I can straight away see that this circuit is exactly the uh, inverting amplifier configuration, so I straight away can know the output input relationship. Okay. Other than that, if we do not see something that is straightforward, inverting or non-inverting, then do not assume anything. Work it out step by step like this, okay, using uh, Ohm's law or node analysis or anything, and then you derive the expression. Okay, only the inverting and non-inverting configurations, the standard one, we can straight away use the formula. Okay, so uh, let me go on to the last uh, question here. Okay, so this question has quite a few things, all right? So the first thing is uh, an audio, okay, so we are given that the audio song has frequencies in the range of 100 to 3000 hertz. It is corrupted with a high frequency noise of 10 kilohertz. Uh, okay, so let's first look at the signal. How is the signal going to be? Uh, A few semesters back, we used to have the. Um, you know, actually, the, the scope in the uh, lab uh, has a frequency analyzer function. 
All right, which means you can actually see the frequency range of the signals that you pass in. All right. Uh, so if you were to take this signal, okay, and you were to try to put it into the op amp, uh, sorry, put it, uh, analyze it in the oscilloscope, okay, what would you observe? So in the range of uh, 100 to 3000 hertz, okay, you will probably see, okay, something like this. Okay, and at the same time, you are told that you have a 10 kilohertz noise spike. That means somewhere over here, there is some noise spike happening. Okay, and 10,000 hertz. Okay, and you want to design a filter to suppress the 10 kilohertz. Okay, so maybe I should. Okay, so because of the lock scale, it won't be so far away. So probably it's maybe around here. Okay, so this is a 10 kilohertz uh, noise and you want to design a filter to suppress the 10 kilohertz uh, noise by 20 dB relative to the pass gate. Okay, so when I design the filter, okay, so we know a low pass filter how it looks like. So when I design this filter, okay, so what, what we are going to design is it's going to be something like this. Okay, and of course, you should start to come down around that. Okay. So roughly around there is, is basically what we are aiming for. But of course, this is just a graphical representation. Mathematically, what we want is the 10 kilohertz noise must be suppressed by 20 dB relative to the pass band gain. That means, okay, if I look at the gain over here, let's say the gain over here is zero. At the point where the filter response is touching this 10 kilohertz wave, it should be negative 20 dB. Okay, so that is sort of the graphical representation of what we want to achieve. Okay, we have a signal 100 to 3000 hertz, we have a 10 kilohertz noise, we are designing a filter. Okay, and how do you design this cutoff frequency such that, okay? When it is rolling off, at the point where it touches a 10 kilohertz point, it should be minus 20 dB. All right. So firstly, uh, what does the minus 20 dB mean? All right. We know the minus 3 dB is the half power. All right. So if I say I reduce by 3 dB means the power is half. How about reduce by 20 dB? Okay. So if I were to draw the system, Okay, so if I say I have input power and I have output power, so 10 log the base 10 of P out over P in, if I want it to be minus 20 dB, okay, if I calculate this, I will get the ratio that P out is equals to 0 0.01 of P in. Okay, that means the output, okay, is 1% uh, of the input power. Uh, output power is 1% of the input power. If you were to do the same analysis in terms of uh, voltage, okay, in terms of voltage, okay, the same signal, but now I do the analysis as voltage, then what you will have is, 20 log to the base 10 of V out over V in to be minus 20 means V out is 0.1 of V in. All right, so this minus 20 dB tells us that your signal, okay, in terms of voltage, you say has gone down by 10 times, but right? it's 0.1 of the actual input. All right, if you look at it in terms of power, we say it has gone down, okay, by uh, 0 0.01 times. Okay, so it's quite a significant uh, reduction of that signal. All right, so that's why this 20 dB is a quite a significant amount. Okay, your power reduced, okay, by, by 0 0.01. Okay, so now we know that, okay, this is what we want to achieve for our circuit that we are designing. Okay, how do we go about designing this? All right, uh, so 
like we said before, we will normally, okay, when you design a filter, okay, we will design active filters, okay, because we want to make sure that the signal uh, is amplified, all right, while you are also doing the filtering. All right, if you just do a passive filter, though it can work, okay, uh, one of the things is your overall signal uh, output will still uh, may not be what you want. Okay, by adding a filter, uh, sorry, by adding an amplifier after that, you are able to amplify the signal to the level that you want. All right, uh, so this actually helps to make sure that what you want gets amplified. All right. Because when you're designing a filter, okay, let's say like what we uh, you all discussed just now in the presentation, we are designing a filter with the main objective that I have some signals that I'm interested in, but I have some frequencies that I want to remove. All right, so naturally, okay, when we design a filter, we want to suppress what we don't want and we want to amplify what we want. All right, when we amplify what we want, we get a clearer picture. Okay, and then when we do an A to D operation or we do some signal analysis, we get better results, all right, compared to a signal that is not yet amplified. Okay, uh, again, why that is important, you, can, you will see when we are doing the A to D part, all right, uh, but amplification is important to make sure that we can get as much of the signal as we can, all right, and we can uh, analyze it better. Okay, it's just like when you listen to music. All right, you can listen to the same song very softly or at a, a, at a slightly louder level. When you listen to it slightly louder, all right, uh, you are able to listen to all the small minor details in the music and appreciate it better. All right, so it's the same thing when your signal is amplified, you are able to extract out all the small, small information there that can help you with the analysis. Okay, so. For designing a filter, we will always take the active uh, part of it, uh, active low, active low pass filter approach. Okay, so the active low pass filter approach. Okay, so let's uh, uh, is basically what you did in our in our studio. So there's two parts to it. Okay, you have the uh, amplification part. Okay, so the amplification over here, we use a non-inverting amplifier. Okay, so if I were to label this as V plus and this is V out, okay, so we know that V out is equals to 2 uh, multiplied by V plus. Okay, 2 into V plus. Okay, why 2 is because this is a uh, non inverting configuration, so it's 1 plus RF over R1. Okay, if you use inverting, then your signal is inverted, all right? Okay, which is not what you want. You want to retain the original signal, but you just want to uh, perform a amplification of it. Okay, so the next part is we want to uh, design the low pass filter. Okay, so the low pass filter is basically the V in, R, and C. Okay, so this is basically your low pass filter. Now, so your R and C is here. So your voltage at this point, V plus, is basically, uh, as what we saw just now, is uh, XC over R plus XC multiplied by V in. Okay, so that is the voltage that you will see at the positive of the op amp. And your op amp is now going to multiply this and give you two times of it. All right, so of course here we are just giving you a number two. It doesn't, the question never specifically say is two times or four times, all right? Okay, so uh, of course if the question specifically mentioned 
you want to amplify by five times or ten times, then you choose the appropriate resistor values and you get that. Okay, in this case, we are just giving you a random number of two. Okay, so with this, uh, what you can do next is you can say that uh, combining these two together, you can write it that V out is equals to uh, 2 into Xc over R plus Xc into V in. Okay, so V out over V in is 2 Xc over R plus Xc. Okay, so now let's look at this into more detail. So 2 uh, Xc over R plus Xc. How do you uh, simplify this or analyze this? So Xc is 1 over J omega C. And this is divided by R plus 1 over J omega C. Okay, so if I were to simplify this, okay, what I will get is 1 over j omega c over uh, r j omega c r plus 1 over j omega c. Okay, and that will give me 2 over 2 into 1 over 1 plus j omega c r. Okay, so that is your V out over V in. Okay, now the next step is we want to, uh, again, we are interested in the amplitude, correct, the magnitude of the relationship between the output and the input. So we take the magnitude. Okay, how do you take the magnitude? Okay, so for this expression, we have basically a a complex number, all right? So we take the magnitude by converting the rectangular to the polar form. Okay, so when you convert rectangular to polar form, you have the magnitude as well as phase. Okay, uh, as I mentioned in class, a filter does introduce some amount of phase shift. Okay, but we are not analyzing the phase aspect in this module. Okay, we are just looking at the amplitude aspect only. Okay, uh, so in terms of phase, all right, what you will get is uh, so in terms of amplitude. Okay, you do the uh, uh, conversion, so you get one uh, over this is one plus omega c r square square root. Okay, so you can write it like this. Okay, so basically what you have done here is the numerator is just one, so there's nothing to do. New, the denominator is a complex number. So if you forgot how to do uh, x plus jy, you convert to r angle theta. R is the amplitude, correct? And r is x square plus y square square root. Okay, so that is what we are doing here. All right, and so now what you have is you have an expression, okay, for relating the output and the input, okay, in terms of magnitude. Okay, so this is basically your gain. V out over V in. This is your gain. Okay, so far, any questions? Anything you want to ask? Okay, so as I mentioned just now, okay, we are doing the uh, active low pass filter configuration. All right, so the first part over here. This is your low pass filter portion. This part over here, this is your amplification portion. Okay. Uh, uh, 
Okay, why are we finding V out over V in? Basically, we are trying to find this relationship so that we know exactly uh, how to design and find the cutoff frequency. Okay, what we want to do is we are now we are asked to find what the cutoff frequency over here. Okay, and what is the cutoff frequency? The cutoff frequency is going to be somewhere here. Now, what is the formula for cutoff frequency? 1 over 2 pi rc. Okay, I need to find 1 over 2 pi rc. Okay, and I need to relate this to this number over here. That the uh, gain at 20 dB. So, if you look at this uh, graph over here, this response curve, what is this point? The point, that point there, is basically where the frequency response curve, which is the filter, is touching the 10 kilohertz. Correct. So the information that I have is at 10 kilohertz, I want the frequency response of the filter to have gone down by 20 dB. Okay. So that is the information I have. So what I need to do is I need to first find the relationship that represents this curve. And that is actually the frequency response of how the gain is. Alright, basically what we are doing here, this A is what? This is the gain. Alright, and we want this gain. Okay, we know the gain is going to be a flat response. Okay, zero up till around close to FC and then it will be going down. Alright, so this relationship that we are trying to find, V out over e, V in, is actually representing the A. But of course, right now it's not yet there because we haven't converted to dB yet. Okay, so since the, so the information is, it must suppress the 10 kilohertz noise by 20 dB. Correct, so let's go and do that. Okay, then we understand what is going on. So, currently what we have is, we have this relationship, but this relationship is in uh, ratio form. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to convert to dB. Okay, so when you want to convert to dB, that's okay, so the gain in dB is uh, 20 log the gain in ratio form, which is this. 2 over 1 plus omega CR squared. So this is basically the gain in dB. Okay, we're just doing a 20 log of the ratio. Okay, now let's uh, look at this a bit more detail now. So this is, okay, so we can break it up into two parts, 20 log to the base 10, 2 subtract 20 log to the base 10 of 1 plus WCR squared. Okay, so this is the total gain. Now, let, let's look at this again. Huh? Now, assuming that you don't have a filter, okay, assuming that, let's, let's just say that I remove this entire filter portion here and V in is directly connected to V plus, okay, then what would be the gain? The gain would have been 2, all right, the gain would have been 2 because the op-amp gain is 2, okay. So, in that case, if the gain is 2, that means that is basically your pass band gain. That means during this point here, when I do not apply any filtering, when I do not apply any filtering, that is the pass band gain. Okay, the pass band gain is the gain without filtering. That means I haven't filtered the signal yet. Okay, that means all the signals are passing through. Okay, so that is the portion that is independent of frequency and that is this portion over here okay so this portion as you can see 20 log to the base 2 has no frequency component to it it is just the op amp gain okay it's just the op amp gain so this is basically what we call the pass band gain then we have the other part which is this minus this and this is basically the change 
in gain due to omega. Okay, because right now here in this second part of the equation or expression, we have an omega there. Okay, that means when the omega changes, then this part will come in into effect. Okay, so rightfully, what do we want? We want that up to the omega where it is still within the pass band, it is still within the pass band, the gain should not be affected. Right, because that is what we want now. for a low pass filter up to somewhere along FC up to that point the, the gain should still be the same that means there should not be any effect all right up from closing closer to FC it will start to go down and then it goes down at 20 dB per decade okay so that is the second half here all right so does everybody understand that idea here how we relate this expression. The first part is the pass by end gain. The second part is the change in the gain due to omega. That means when the signal frequency is factored in. Any questions on this? Okay, so with that, we can now look back at the information that we have. The information that we have is that at 20 kilohertz, so at 10 kilohertz, the gain must go down by 20 dB. Okay, at 10 kilohertz, the gain must go down by 20 dB. So that tells us that this portion must be minus 20 dB at 10 kilohertz. Make sense? Because this must be 20 dB lesser than the passband gain. This is the passband gain. And at 10 kilohertz, this second half of the expression must be equal to minus 20 dB. Okay, so with that understanding, we can now say that this whole second half, uh, second part of this expression, minus 20 log to the base 10, 1 plus omega CR square must be equal to minus 20 dB. Right, at okay, so maybe I should put a note here at f is equals to 10 kilohertz. Okay, so what we can do then is to solve for this. So we can say that log to the base 10 root 1 plus omega cr square is equals to 1. So uh, root. 1 plus omega CR square is equals to uh, 10. Okay, and then you can solve for RC. Uh, root of 10 square minus 1 divided by 2 pi times 10k. And that will give me 1.584 times 10 to the power of minus 4 seconds. Okay, so right now what do we have? Okay, so coming back to this, we have we have now come up with this expression. Okay, this expression is an expression that now clearly tells us what is the passband gain and what is the gain or change in the gain due to omega. That means when the signal's uh, frequency changes. Okay, and from the question, we know that at 10 kilohertz, we want this change to be minus 20 dB. So we can now relate that here and solve and get a expression for RC. Okay, but of course, uh, we haven't solved it yet because we haven't found what is FC. Correct? We're supposed to find FC. But what do we know about FC? FC is always what? Okay, so FC is somewhere over here. And FC is the minus 3 dB point. Okay, we know the FC is the minus 3 dB point. That means we now can come back in and say that what we want is 
the same thing, all right? But for this second half of the expression here, we want it to be minus 3 dB at FC. Okay, minus 3 dB at FC. So let's look at that. Okay, so we can say that minus 20 uh, log to the base 10 of root 1 plus omega RC square must be equals to minus 3. Okay, but we do not know what is the frequency yet, correct? So let's solve for that. So we can say that uh, root 1 plus omega RC square is equals to 10 to the power of 3 over 20, which will be root 2. Okay, and from there we can solve for RC is equals to 1. Okay, so this is when uh, the frequency is at FC. Okay, why? Because we are using the minus 3 dB as the change in the uh, gain. So since we already know what is RC, okay, from this expression, we can then solve for F. Okay, so uh, F is uh, 1 over 2 pi RC, which will be 1 over 2 pi 1.584 times 10 to the power minus 4, and that will give me 1 kilohertz. FC is always minus 3 dB, okay, whether it's high pass, band pass or whatever, the cutoff frequency is always standard, it's always at minus 3 dB. Okay, so basically what you have now is you have a FC at 1 kilohertz, alright, and uh, so, so what you know is, based on the information that we wanted, that the, uh, so the information that we were given is this. Okay, and with this information, we solve for RC, and then from there, we put back into the same expression, and then we look at it at the minus 3 dB, which is the FC point, okay, and then we solve for the uh, frequency, uh, or the cutoff frequency. Okay, so effectively, basically what you will have is, your FC is actually around, uh, one kilohertz here. Okay, so let me uh, come back to the slides first. Okay, so Right now, if you look at it, okay, uh, what do you see is FC is uh, one kilohertz. Uh, so how would your waveform look like, your final waveform? Okay, so let's come back uh, and look at that. Okay, so basically at 1 kilohertz, okay, if you look at the signal here, alright, what you have is at 1 kilohertz, your uh, signal, okay, so so at, at the, normally at a pass by, pass band gain, we say that the gain is A, A dB. So at 1 kilohertz over here, okay, your gain has dropped by negative 3 dB. Okay, and at 10 kilohertz, your gain, okay, is dropped by minus 20 dB. Okay, so this is how your response curve would look like, okay, if you were to actually run the circuit or build the circuit and look at the response, okay, at 
at by specifying a cutoff frequency of one kilohertz, you are actually uh, able to fulfill the requirement that at 10 kilohertz, your gain has reduced by 20 dB. Okay, now the thing that you uh, will look at is this. The signals between the 100 and 3000 hertz. Okay, so you can see that we are having an audio signal that is 400 to 3000 hertz. So when my cutoff is at 1 kilohertz, which means that the signal from 1 kilohertz to 3 kilohertz also are affected or they are also attenuated slightly okay they are also attenuated slightly all right so as you can see over here the range 1100 hertz is here which means that the signals from 1k to 2k uh, roughly are also getting some attenuation up to around 10 db okay so is this acceptable okay maybe maybe not okay depends on your system all right so of course uh, if you say that Okay, I want to be able to capture all of my uh, signal from 100 hertz to 3 kilohertz. Okay, so of course in that situation, then what you need to do is you need to move the cutoff a bit more, alright? But if you move the cutoff a bit more, then what gets affected? Your objective of saying that the 10 kilohertz noise was reduced by 20 dB will not be, alright? Because if I were to move this, let's say I start a bit later and if i go down like this that will happen at 10 kilohertz my signal would have been here which is higher than the minus 20 that i wanted all right maybe minus 12 minus 13. okay so you can see there is some conflict all right i want to have all of my signal but at the same time i want the 10 kilohertz to go down to minus 20 db all right so it is not practical or it's not achievable with this current design okay so what is the next thing that you can do okay of course this is not covered all right uh, like i said this is where you can consider higher order filters okay so for higher order filters all right uh, again it is not covered it's not examinable or anything but you can look at it if you're interested all right and basically what it does is it allows us to have a much sharper attenuation that means instead of minus 20 dB per decade, you can go up to 40 dB per decade or 30 dB per decade. Alright, so in that case, okay, if I come back here, I can cut off at maybe 3 kilohertz and still come down faster. Okay, I can slope down much faster. Okay, so I can achieve the objective of fulfilling everything. Okay, and uh, bringing down uh, at a much faster rate okay so this second order third order filter is basically you need to add more rc pairs okay it's not a single rc pair where you just change the values and you can achieve this okay if you want to have second order third order you need to have more rc pairs okay but that is again a different design okay we are not going into that like as we have given you the links over here which you can uh, reference Okay, but it's basically having more RC combinations uh, at the input side to achieve this higher order response. Okay, so again, this is just for your information only. All right, uh, but again, uh, in a first order filter, of course, it's easy to design, easy to analyze, but you have to do some trade off between your frequency signals that you want plus whatever signal that you, you need to attenuate. Okay, so in, in, in this uh, tutorial, basically, I think question four is quite comprehensive in, in covering a lot of the concepts of the filter design and how to look at it from the uh, uh, analysis point of view. Okay, so why do we use low pass filter in our design is because in this case, we are dealing uh, with a generally okay we try not to uh, change the face of the signal unless it doesn't make any significance in this case it is an audio signal all right so if you're talking about audio signal okay by inverting it okay uh, the outcome will be different 
Okay, so of course, even though it is not specified uh, exactly in the question, all right, uh, it is always better not to change uh, the the phase uh, from positive to negative. Okay, unless you are very certain that it, it's not important. Okay, in this case, it's the audio song, so practically you want to keep the phase. Okay, but rightfully, if you think that okay, it is not necessary. You want to choose an inverting amplifier in your design, in your application where uh, it does not matter whether it's 180 degrees out of phase, then it's fine. Okay, like I said, the amplifier part is the, uh, the add-on. Right? The filter part is the one that is does the main operation. Okay, if you're fine with inverting the signal, then it's okay, no issues. Okay, can we amplify the signal and more? Yes. Okay. Again, if you want to amplify the signal more, you just need to change your RF and R1 values. But right here you have 10K and 10K. All right, so you can always amplify it more. Okay, so in the last part, we use the minus three because we know that the want to calculate fc okay we want to calculate fc means for fc the gain has to drop by minus 3 db okay the question is asking us to find fc okay the cutoff frequency so for the cutoff frequency the gain has to relate to minus 3 db in the first equation we relate it to minus 20 because we are given this requirement we are given this requirement that at my at 10 kilohertz the gain must have been reduced by minus 20 dB. Okay, so based on that requirement is given to us, we substitute into the expression and we solve for RC. Then we need to put it back into the second expression here because we know that the gain has to reduce by 3 dB when you are talking about the cutoff frequency. Okay, so that is why we do it in two parts. The first part is based on the attenuation that we want. All right, and this is the uh, so both the RC values are the same. All right, because this RC value is the same RC value we are using here. It's only one circuit, correct? The circuit never changed. Okay, it is the same RC value, but what we are doing is we are analyzing it from the first from the perspective of the twenty dB drop at ten kilohertz to get the RC value and then we are using the value in the second expression. Okay, so this is WRC, don't get confused. And huh? this is WRC, not RC. Okay. This WRC is one. Okay, when F equals to FC. This RC value we get when omega, this is when, okay, we calculated at uh, using the information that the omega or the frequency is 10 kilohertz and the dB is um, minus 20 dB. So it's the same RC value. Okay, it's only one circuit, but we're analyzing it at different points. The first point is, when the omega or the frequency is 10 kilohertz. So we know that when the frequency is 10 kilohertz, the change in the gain is supposed to be minus 20 dB. Okay, so that is the first expression, this and this. Okay, so you have to remember that the, this expression that we get here is relating two things. The first is the passband gain, and the second is the change in the gain because of omega. All right, and the change in the gain because of omega, we are analyzing it at two specific points. The first point is at 10 kilohertz, it must be minus 20 dB. All right, so with that information, we get the RC value, and then we use that to find FC. So FC, we, we don't know FC, but we know that at FC, the gain has to drop by minus 3 dB. All right, so that is why we do this. Okay, and then we use the RC value to find the F the frequency.